So welcome everyone. Uh, today I'll be discussing the uh, chapter 17 from hands-on design patterns with C++, uh, the part of the chapter that talks about the adapter pattern. So what is the adapter pattern and what's the motivation behind it? Uh, its, its goal is to adapt between two incompatible code bases. Um, so it adapts interface of code base one such that it can then be consumed by code base two, and it does so by translating uh, between the the calls, the compatible interfaces, or you know the the methods on uh, on one interface. Uh, it adapts from these calls to to another interface by translating the parameters, whatever it needs to do. Uh, it implements an interface of another code base, and then holds a reference to an instance of an object from from a second unrelated code base. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you how this is implemented in a second. And uh, adapters can be applied at runtime, uh, just like decorators uh, can be applied to an interface, um, you know, whole interface, a class, or, or a function call. And also, like the decorator, it can be owning or non-owning, meaning the adapter um, can either just hold a pointer, non-owning pointer to an object it adapts, or it can hold it by value, hold an instance of it, and be responsible for uh, for owning it and for its lifetime, for cleaning it up and so on. Uh, so here's a simple sketch uh, that I that I just uh, came up with a minute ago to, to illustrate um, the, the design of it. So on the left, you see framework one. And in that framework one, there is some class function that implements interface one. Uh, and then in that framework, the framework uses the uh, objects or in instances you know, of objects that implement this interface or, or calls on specific you know, function signatures. And then on the right, you will see framework two um, that has its own interface two and its own set of functions or classes that, that implement this interface and that use instances of objects that implement it. And in between there, on top of the dotted line, you see the adapter. And so adapter here, uh, will adapt something from framework one so that it can be consumed by framework two. And it does so by implementing the interface from framework two and holding a reference to something from framework one. So then instances of the adapter can be passed to classes or functions um, that would normally only accept interface two. Um, and this adapter implements that interface and whatever call it receives on that interface, it will translate it accordingly to uh, to fit into interface one. So here's um, <clears throat> here's the implementation of two incompatible code bases. And if you look at the left, you have your interface one, object one that implements this interface that has a method one, and some code base one function that operates on on an instance of this uh, of these objects or these interfaces. And on the right, similarly. Have the same case, interface two, method two, object two, code base two. And as it is, uh, these code bases are incompatible. So nothing from code base one can be used by code base two and vice versa. So here's the implementation, simple implementation of the adapter itself. So you'll see that on the left, you'll see the implementation of the adapter. It implements the interface one and then when it is constructed, it takes a pointer to some instance of interface two. And finally, you will see that it implements the method one from interface one. And in this example, it merely does a call on the method two from interface two, but a more, more complex example um, could change parameter types, maybe do some tweaking to the parameters, uh, accept different number of parameters and pass some you know, dummy parameters or uh, or create some some values if um, if the parameters to these methods were were different. Uh, so this is also an example of a non-owning adapter. It only holds a pointer. It's not responsible for the lifetime of the object it points to. But this could easily be changed. Um, it could you know hold um, hold something some object two that implements interface two by value, or hold a, have a unique pointer to it, um, and that it would be responsible for its lifetime. And on the right, you will see <clears throat> that now I'm able to create an instance of object two 
pass an address of it to the adapter, and then pass the adapter to code base one. Um, and the adapter is responsible for translating these calls, and code base one is completely unaware that it's now using some object from completely different uh, code base. This could be a library or whatever module, anything, right? Um, author also talks about um, different kinds of adapters. Uh, to name a few, there are function adapters. So that's that's a very simple idea. You have a you have something that accepts a function with a given signature, and you create the function with that signature, and then translate uh, whatever parameters are given to you uh, during the function call to uh, the signature function to. Uh, there are compile time adapters. Uh, an example would be something like a deleter from uh, from unique pointer. A uh, unique pointer expects an instance of something that is a functor, so some, some object that implements the function call operator. Um, and said adapter uh, can implement this, um, this function call operator and, for example, translate it to, uh, to a call to STD free. Um, finally, author talks about uh, adapter versus policy, <clears throat> and I don't think they're really related at all, but well, it's mentioned there, so I'll mention it also. Um, adapter's job is really only to translate um, from one interface to the other, not, not decorate the interface, not change any of it, just simply make, a, make the translation between two incompatible interfaces. Whereas a policy, um, as, as we discussed a few weeks ago, you know, a policy can, um, can change the interface or decorate it, can add to it or remove to it. Uh, especially if you have a policy that um, that is inherited publicly from by by an object using this policy, you can you can inject methods into the public interface, or you can remove methods depending on policy, and that is not what adapter is supposed to do. And this is it. <clears throat>